The path to mediocrity, straitjackets human potential. The path to greatness unleashes and releases human potential. The path to mediocrity is the quick fix, shortcut approach to life. The path to greatness is a process of sequential growth from the inside out. Travelers on the lower path to mediocrity live out the cultural software of the ego, indulgence, scarcity, comparison, competitiveness, and victimism. Travelers on the upper path to greatness rise above negative cultural influences and choose to become the creative force of their lives. One word expresses the pathway to greatness, voice. Those on the path find their voice and inspire others to find theirs. The rest never do. That's a quote from Stephen Covey's The Eighth Habit, Finding Your Voice from Effectiveness to Greatness. The work that has been done in this room for the past six and a half years, the work that's been done in our classrooms, in our small groups, in our events, it's all about stepping onto this path of greatness, this path of finding one's voice. It's the road of spiritual and emotional development. It's the path of mental clarity and physical healing. Everything this center stands for is about walking the great road. And I don't mean adhering to uh, a specific religion or an ideological code. It's not about anything other than finding that within that speaks the loudest to the world. That's the great idea, that we are all one. When one of us is left behind, all of us are left behind to some degree. And by the same token, when one of us reaches a state of deeper, wider consciousness, all of us come forward into that consciousness to some degree. All for one and one for all. So we do our work quietly, transforming our lives, one person at a time, and as we see in our mission statement, it always starts with me. So what's your voice? You've been asked that question a hundred different ways. What do you want from life? What makes you feel good about your life? When do you feel the most passionate in your life? Those are all the same question. What is yours to voice in this life? And often, many of us go into a bit of a panic state when we hear questions like that. Uh, my mind goes blank. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. But it's from fear. It's from fear that I don't know what I want. Because I was reading recently Marianne Williamson's incredible um, quote. And she talks about what we're afraid of, which is it's our, it's our light, not our darkness. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant and gorgeous and talented and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. We all know this, don't we? We all know it up here. If you've been coming to these rooms, and you started this journey long before you ever came to Center for Spiritual Living, the path of the great road, the great path, the path to finding your voice. And we know it, but it's always hardest making the journey from here to here. Because when we hear it here, it becomes embodied and begins transforming our lives. 
for good or ill, you understand. For good or ill. So when we stand on that great path of oneness and we move always towards finding our voice and helping others to find theirs, then, then the fear is taken out. The fear of shining too brightly. Church of the Earth is my favorite holiday. And it ought to be because I invented it. <laughs> we have a lot of holidays throughout the year. You know, we celebrate great cultural events. We, great, we celebrate ideological events and religious events and great leaders and all manner of things. But what I needed in my life was a day when we metaphorically get down on our knees and kiss the ground we came from. <sighs> you know, Mother Earth created us and sustains us, hosts us for the entirety of our lives. And most of us are really bad guests. So today is a day, and we do this four times a year, when we actually stop and remember where we come from, where we remember the soil beneath our feet and the important message that we are one with the very earth itself. We're made from it. We came from it and we go back to it. It's our mother. So to prepare myself for this message, I went to High Banks Park to really get up close and personal with the mother. And as I walked along the path, you know, your feet go crunch, crunch, crunch. And all of a sudden, you realize that there's also a plopping sound. Plop, 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 plop. It's acorns dropping from the trees. And as I stopped and picked one up, I, I started thinking about the acorn and, and what it really is. It's, it is the offspring of a tree. The tree has done their work for the, for the year. They, they took the nourishment out of the ground and, and they took the water from the sky and they put it together to create little babies. And then they drop them off. They drop them back into the earth to achieve their acorn destiny. When you think about it, the, year, the tree does this year after year after year. So when you really go deep and let your mind get bent a little bit around it, you, you begin to see that this acorn has within it, coded in its very heart, in its DNA, everything that has ever been a part of acorn life since the very first oak tree. It has it coded right in there. It is a container for all that has ever been in the line of oak trees. And then you look at it again and you think that this little thing is gonna plant itself in the ground and it's gonna grow up to be a unique and sturdy tree. And then year after year, it's going to drop its offspring thousands at a time. And each one of those acorn babies will contain everything that's gone before and everything that is to come every possibility there could ever be for oak tree is contained in this. And I thought, what a marvelous metaphor for us today as containers for all that ever has been in the human history and story and all that is ever possible for the humans right there in you, my little acorns. The acorn is one with the oak tree, always and forever. There is no separation. There is only one. Life is like that. It, it, it brings us into the world and it plops us in the dirt and says, here, have fun. Take all that that's ever been and all that could ever be and make something of it. Wow, we're loaded. We're loaded. The DNA is loaded with potential, 
all the past mistakes, all the past glories, and all the potential that could ever be conceived by a human being is right where you are. Because there is only one. We are all a part of the whole. We are one with life itself, always and forever, coded in our DNA. So go back to the forest with me for a minute, and I'm standing there just taking in this beautiful green cathedral and listening to the voices of the forest as they're singing to me, and I hear the birds. And each bird is singing its own particular song. Why? Because that's what birds do. It's authentic. It's natural. It's in their DNA to sing that song. And then pretty soon I heard the frog croaking out its silly song. Why? Because it's what frogs do. It's their authentic reality is to sing a song that is unique and particular to the frog species and to that particular frog. They do it because it's what they do. It's in their DNA. I've learned to pay attention to animals when I go on my forest walks because they often have messages for us. So when I got home, I, I looked at the, the frog. And there's some deep, rich, ancient mythology around the frog. And it is that because it is an animal that comes from both the land and the sea, it carries the magic of both elements. It is able to cross the realms of magic from the water to the land. And I thought, isn't that the truth for us as well? We're like that. We are magical creatures. We have water magic and earth magic. We are human and divine. We cross the barrier between animal nature and the divine nature. What a nice metaphor. The frog crossing the barriers of magic. And you know what gives us that magic? The power we have to choose. That's what elevates us from the rest of the animal kingdom that we know of. And it is what helps us get in such a pickle that we get ourselves into, is that choice. We do not behave according to our animal nature because we are also given choice. And that's wherein the potential lies, choosing choosing from that realm of possibility that is in your acorn nature, what is right for you? What's your voice? What song are you going to sing? Each of us brings the past and the present together in every moment. Each of us stands at a continual choice point, and each choice influences not only our lives, but the lives of everyone else everywhere by what song we will give voice to. What song do you sing? What song would you like to be singing? Well, to know the answer to that, we must do three things. First, we must find out what is natural and authentic for us to do. And second, we must dream the largest dream for ourselves that we possibly can. And third, we must choose toward that dream with the intention of making it real. That's the magic of being human. We can do that. Stephen Covey tells us that to find our voice, we need to look inside at the center of each of us where vision, passion, and discipline meet with conscience at its center. He writes, vision is seeing with the mind's eye what is possible in people, in projects, in causes, and in enterprises. Vision results when our mind joins need with possibility. Discipline is paying the price to bring that vision into reality. Discipline arises when vision joins with commitment. Passion is the fire, the desire, the strength, the conviction, and the drive that sustains the discipline to achieve the vision. 
Passion arises when human need overlaps unique human talent. And conscience is the inward moral sense of what is right and what is wrong, the drive toward meaning and contribution. It's the guiding force to vision, discipline, and passion. The vision, when you look out upon your world, what does it need? What could it use to be a better place? The passion, ask what skills and talents do I bring to my world that can help meet that need? The discipline, what commitment must I make to myself to achieve this? And conscience, is this right for me? Is this mine to do? Does this match my spiritual goals? Do I confirm it with my choice? We're going to do a personal ritual today in honor of Church of the Earth. So if the, the ushers would please come forward. I have some baskets for you to pass around. Now go ahead and pass them out and everyone take one and pass them. They are, uh, I, when I picked them up, I, I tried to make sure, I did make sure that every one of them had their pretty little caps still stuck on them. <laughs> but you may find that you choose one that does not have a pretty little cap on it because what happens when acorns hit the dirt? They start to transform and their little caps don't fit anymore. And so they lose them and they become open at the top. It's the place where the nut, where the seed cracks open. So if your little acorn doesn't have a pretty little hat on, be glad because it's already well on its way to transformation. And it represents you. And I'm sorry I didn't wash them, but I was afraid they'd lose their hats, so. <laughs> so as soon as everyone has one, we've got a few more rows to go then just take that acorn and let it rest in your dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, put it in your right hand. If you're left-handed, put it in your left hand. Does everybody have them now? Oh, we got the very last group. So you have your acorn in your dominant hand. And what do we know about the dominant hand? It's connected with the left brain, the thinking side of ourselves. So as this acorn rests in your dominant hand, imagine that it's connected to the side of you, the part of you that is rational, that is intelligent, that is thinking, that puts two and two together. Everything you've ever learned, everything you've ever known, everything you've put together, every, every belief that you've ever had is somewhere connected to the left side of your brain. So think about it now as containing everything you've ever learned about the world. And just like the acorn, you contain all knowledge of the human race. You have the history of the human experience inside you. Everything that's ever been, everything that ever can be. And because you are life's acorn, you hold all the possibility for the human race right where you are. Mm. Because we know that all thoughts are creative, it is the left brain that begins the process of thinking things into becoming. That's our power. So just breathe into that for a moment. Now switch the acorn to the other hand, your non-dominant hand, and consciously, Move your brain connection over to your right side of your brain. That's your imaginal brain. 
That's your intuitive brain. It's your creative self that you have within you. And know that you contain every dream, every hope that has ever been held in the human heart. You do. You contain all of the love that has ever been felt, ever been given, ever been received. You do. You contain all of the joy.